and we'll hand you over to the Lord Mayor. For one thing, is once you take this, I'll have to just pop it there and take off some of the um, bits and pieces which are holding it together. To make so it look nice. Make it look nice. So, over to you, Lord Mayor. Lovely. Well, good morning, everyone, ladies, gentlemen, young men and women. Hello. Lovely to see you all on this um, changeable morning. If we follow the forecast, we would all be huddled up and... Uh, muffled up for a, um, a terrible storm, but mercifully it's not here with us yet. I'm delighted to be here with my consul and husband Trevor and David, the pastor here, to um, welcome you to Newcastle's historic key site. A few words before we do what we've come to do and <laughs> unveil this wonderful plaque uh, about our history and how important this year is in the city's history. This, I can't emphasize enough how special 2016-2017 has been in the history of Newcastle. We have been commemorating, as many of you here will know, the fact that in 1216 King John gave Newcastle its first royal charter, allowing merchants to elect their own mayor and control trade on our River Tyne behind us. So we are celebrating jointly with the Freeman this 800th anniversary of the mayorality. That's 800 years of us having a mayor and Freeman in an unbroken sequence. Few cities, if any, in Europe will have the same office that has been handed down to known and named recipients over so many years in an unbroken sequence, thus enabling us to be the great city throughout the ages to become the great city we are here today. Harry Clasper is one of our famous sons of this city and throughout my tenure as Lord Mayor and throughout recent years we in Newcastle have been commemorating through plaques which this is just one of the latest a series of plaques immortalizing these sons and daughters who did amazing things in our city of Newcastle throughout the ages. These plaques celebrate and commemorate the lives of those who left their mark in so many ways on the city and their part in making the city what it is today. It cannot be denied that Harry Clasper is one of these very special people. Born in 1812 as one of 14 children, he worked as a pitman until the great miners strike and went on to have 13 children of his own with his wife. Harry went on to become one of the most renowned, if not the most renowned sportsman in Great Britain. He was famous in the Northeast from the 1840s until his death in 1870. And hundreds of thousands of people watched rowing on rivers throughout Britain and would bet on the outcome of these matches. Rowing was the sport of the working class before football, which is something that is something to behold when you think where we are today. And Harry was a champion of not only the time, but the Weir, the Tees, the Mersey, the Clyde, and the Thames. What an achievement. In 1862, a testimonial for him was held at Bambra's Music Hall and the song, The Blade and Races, which we are going to hear a rendition of later, was sung for the very first time in his honor. Following his death in 1870, more than 130,000 people lined the streets of Newcastle and Gateshead to pay their final respects before he was laid to rest in Wickham Cemetery, where a large monument was erected to him. So I am delighted to be here and share in what is a very historical moment in our city for a very special son of our city with his closest descendant, David Clasper here, who I know has written a book on the life story of his relative. And I know there is a, a play that you are all aware of that has been written in commemoration of all the things I have mentioned in his lifetime that he has done. 
So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and young people, we would like to unveil this plaque, David and I, to have this testimony to the historical achievements of Harry Clasper. Thank you. David would like to say a few words. Could I just say that um, there's a lot of people, too many, too numerous to mention, but how grateful we are to get this position. Um, I know Newcastle City Council have played a big part. Their Swords Network Rail. But the reason we've picked this position is Harry, many of Harry's races started by the piles of the high level up river to Scotswood. So it seemed the ideal place to place the plan. Thank Excellent. you. Well done. Thank you. Right, <laughs> I was going to the Glen races, it was on the 9th of June, 1862 on a summer's afternoon. I got the bus from Barmas, she was heavy laden. Along we went, Collingwood Street, that's on the road to Bladen. Oh, my oh, lads, you should have seen the gun. Passing the folks along the road just as they were stunned. All the lads and lasses there with all the smiling faces, gathered along the Scotsman Road. To see the maiden races. We pull past Armstrong's factory and up the Robin is there. But gather now the railway bridge, the bus wheel flew off there. The lasses lost the canalines, the fields had hide the faces. I got two black eyes and a broken nose, gun the maiden races. Oh, you lads, you should have seen us gunning. Pass the folks along the road just as they were standing. All the lads and lasses there with all the smiling faces. Gather along the Scotsman Road to see the bleeding races. Hey! Hey! Do you want to go some photos? Yeah? Right, we will uh, leave that there for two seconds. Uh, I think. Mr. Clasper may be about to say some words, in which case we won't leave it there for two seconds. We'll come back in and see what he says. Mr. Clasper, have you a moment? Are you, are you now going to be speaking to everybody, or can we have a quick word? Aye, uh, whatever, yeah. Aye, right. Grant, if you just introduce yourself, I'm Hugh. I'm from the City Council, so uh, everyone, heard you introduce, but tell us who you are and why you're here. I'm great-great-nephew of Harry Clasper, my great-grandfather being Richard, one of the championship crew. Wow, so, so tell us what he did. He used to set off from here. Row to yeah. Scotswood, amongst other things, yeah? This was one of the main areas that they rode from, the piles of the high level. It was a great starting place. I think it's somewhere like four miles from here, up to Scotswood, and uh, many a battle would take place, not only with other rowers, but with the steamboats who used to follow the rowers, <laughs> trying to get the best advantage. Uh, there was lots of accidents, and uh, it was quite a day. You can imagine the sight of the keys and that would be packed with people... Uh, watching the races and what have you. So can you tell us a little about some of his exploits then? <laughs> Amongst his many achievements, what, what did he get up to? Well, 1845, we went down onto the Thames with a crew, mainly consisting of his brothers and an uncle, and they brought back the championship of the world to the Tyne. And they say the scenes will never be repeated on Tyneside. There was just thousands. The whole city came to a standstill, just coming out to... Uh, Welcome the lads home, more or less. So Newcastle United got some, something to live up to, should they? Oh, have they've got a long way to go, yes, yeah, a long way to go. <laughs> so, I mean, so how does it feel for you? You've got this plaque. Has it been a, a oh, long road getting this put here? It's been a labour of love since about the early 1980s. Um, when we started to research, we thought we had nothing else to do but go to a library and get a book. No books whatsoever on these famous oarsmen, nothing. So, my wife and myself and my sister decided to do something about it. And this is from, this is what's come of all that hard work, really. So, you, you, you found out his story, you've written it down, you've recorded the life of this pretty incredible working class fella, ordinary bloke from the North East, yeah? I've been fortunate enough to have two books written and published. The first one was in 1990 called Hero of the North, 
but the second one, Growing a Way of Life, which hopefully will be on sale at the Theatre Royal, is um, the second one that came out in 2003, and it really tells you all about his exploits, his races. It's certainly worth reading. And can you tell us a little about the play? The play that Ed was put together, I think really... It's best I say nothing, just people go and see it for themselves. It's a tremendous play. And Jamie Brown, who plays the part of Harry, is just fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much. This must be a very proud day for you. Congratulations. It's, it's sort of a lot of hard work, um, and we're seeing the outcome, yeah. I'm thank forgetting you. to ask the obvious questions. You row yourself? I have tried it, but I'm more in the history side of it. I think I'll stay on dry land. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm just going to swing the camera up here so everyone can have a look at the plaque. You're welcome. Right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. right, thank you very much for joining us. Anyone who's uh, not in Newcastle, there you go. There's the bridges as it heads west. Uh, swing you round. High bridge for you. Swing bridge. Tyne bridge. Millennium Bridge, kind of just below it there, and uh, it's it's good that we can do these things just to celebrate our city and the people that live here. So thank you very much for watching this. Bye bye. <laughs>